Hey everyone, my name is Timothy Karambat, founder of Memplex Labs, and today is my, gonna be my third video on Chroma that is hopefully not going to get outdated, where we deploy Chroma with persistent directory, so our data is always ours and we can grab it, with an API key, and we do this all on render. Render is by far the most expensive deployment option, setting you back at about 25 bucks per month and some change for storage. AWS will set you back around 13 bucks or so, but it's way more involved. If you're not comfortable with command line, render is by far and away the most convenient option. It is also the fastest, so this video will be quite short. And also just so everybody can timeline this, it's November 21st, 2023. We are on Chroma version 0.4.18. This was deployed about three hours ago. So very recent. And obviously to run this, you will need a render account with billing attached. Again, as I said, this will set you back around 25 bucks a month at minimum because of the demand requirements for CPU that Chroma requires to run fast. You really don't wanna go smaller. Your performance will be horrible. So on your render dashboard, all you need to do is go to new web service. Now there are two options here, building from GitHub, or building from a repo, which you can do, but takes way longer, or we can just use the advanced option, which is frankly much more simple, and actually just pull in the Chroma DB image. So we go Chroma DB slash Chroma, just click away, and you'll see that it finds the Docker image for, for Chroma. And then we can give our service a name. So let's call this Chroma with credentials. As you can see, I've already done this before. We can add it to a project. This is a render specific thing. It's just for organization. Um, we can deploy in a region that's closest to us. I recommend doing that, reduces latency. And then, of course, this is where I was talking about where the money comes in. You will need at least two gigabytes of RAM. And this isn't because Chrome is eating up an insane amount of storage. There's actually a lot built in here and that RAM will come in handy and you will need it, as I said, about 25 bucks a month minimum. Advanced options, however, are going to be very important here. And there are a couple nuances just for render. They're not complicated. We're going to walk through them right now. So we need to add some environment variables. Luckily, a very kind contributor, yours truly, updated the Chroma docs recently to show you how we can set environment variables to use a X Chroma token header while we're using Chroma so that we can have API authentication. And I do want to give a shout out to, I believe it is Taz and the core team who actually got authentication embedded into Chroma extremely quickly. A uh, round of applause for them, honestly. I did not help, I just updated the doc. So literally, if you're saying thank you, th say thank you to them. Now, we wanna use the X Chroma token type of authentication schema. So we're gonna need a couple environment variables. This first one right here, the server auth credentials. And what we're gonna to wanna to put is this is going to be our token so let's just call this like sk secret that's going to be the actual token we use to connect then we need the credentials provider now be very careful to not include the double quote on any of these values you do not need quotes around any of these they will be automatically quoted for you by render do not accidentally did that do that i actually recorded this video previously and forgot to press record and I did that. So you're gonna get the express version of this video because you will learn from my mistakes of which there are many and numerous. Now, we have set all of our environment variables. Uh, this X Chroma token is gonna to translate into the header X hyphen Chroma hyphen token. So just so you know that that's what that's doing. The next thing is we need a disk. So this is going to be a persistent storage, basically hard drive. And we're going to call it Chroma Storage. Doesn't matter what you call it. What does matter is where you mount it. So I'm going to mount it to slash storage. It has to be an absolute path and you can't mount it to root. Just do slash storage if you have no idea what I just said. The next thing is you're actually going to want to go back up to the environment variables and you're going to want to paste in a new environment variable that you haven't seen in any of these other videos. And that is persist underscore directory. And what is that? That is actually going to be the location of which, where we write all of our Chroma data to, which is slash storage. And then you can just make a subfolder here. You don't wanna write it directly into storage in case for whatever reason you wanna store more things. Just It's just bad practice. Don't do that. We're gonna write it to a correctly spelled Chroma hyphen storage folder. It, Chroma will automatically create the folder in the persistent directory so that it makes sense and that it all works. Now, after we have set that last one, we're gonna to wanna to modify the size of our volume. 
With Render, you can only go up in size. You can't go down, and you pay 25 cents per gigabyte per month. So you're going to want to make sure you use the smallest storage capacity that you can stomach before upgrading because it will affect your monthly cost, which is again, at minimum, 25 bucks a month, depending on your storage or depending on your server type. Lastly, we do want to actually do a health check. And the way to do that is slash API slash V1 slash heartbeat. This will return a 200 okay response. If for whatever reason your server crashes, Render will actually send you an email saying, hey, uh, your server appears to be unhealthy, which would then prompt you to go restart the server or do whatever needs to be done. After that, that's it. Just click create web service. This process of pulling in the container and restarting it actually will only take but a couple minutes, honestly. Be aware on render when starting your container for the first time, like we're doing right now, the process can take a little bit longer, but subsequent restarts will be much faster and also they will pull in the latest image and all of that. So what you're gonna see in the logs here is you're gonna see a boot, then you're gonna see render restart it to map the URL here directly to port 8000. This is also nice, you come with HTTPS included, which is really nice. Okay, so it looks like our uh, service was completely deployed. You see we got the latest uh, event log and we're good to go. Um, it even hit our heartbeat URL. In Postman, let's hit that same URL. The heartbeat endpoint actually will always return 200 even if you have authentication. It isn't a private endpoint. What is a private endpoint is collections. So let's hit that. You see we get unauthorized. This is expected. So I'm back in anything LLM because I just use it as an easy way to chat with docs and also embed documents in vector databases like Chroma so I can chat with them. So I'm gonna select Chroma as my option here. I actually have my URL Chroma with credentials, but let's just copy it to be sure. We know we're using the X Chroma token. So let's go back into here. And so if we go back to our environment variables, you can now see the misspelled SK hyphen secret with two E's for some reason, because I typed it wrong. We go back into here and we go to turn on this thing, go to SK secret with the misspelling, and then we now have our collection. We go back to anything LLM, post that token in there, save changes. And I'm just doing this again because this is easy for me to embed documents. I already have two documents embedded. So let's just move them over, save and embed. And if I go to Postman and request our collections, we should have one now. And we do. Now let's say that you're like me and you realize that you just misspelled your API token because you just want to do that. Or maybe you accidentally committed it and you want to change it because now the whole world knows it. All you need to do is go into your render server, go to environment, go to this environment variable and change this to whatever the new value is that hopefully is still spelled correctly. Wow. Okay. And so now my new secret will be SK hyphen Hunter two. The SK is just for me. You can literally have this just be the word hello world. If you like, I'm gonna click save changes. And what we should see in the logs of this service is our system will get rebooted, but because we have that disk storage task attached to render, we actually will persist our data. So we'll just have a new API key, which is great. Okay, so it looks like our container has restarted with those new environment variables. So let's go and hit it from the API endpoint. You can see that we get unauthorized. This is expected because we changed our key. So let's do Hunter2, send it again. And we get our data and our data has persisted because of our smart use of the storage device and the clever use of environment variables that Chroma provides us. Likewise, if you wish to turn off authentication, you would just delete all of these. Don't remove the persistent directory. It will mess everything up. But in general, your service is now live. You now have a render server running Chroma on its latest instance. You can always update the image at any time, update your API key, update your credentials. You have an HTTPS domain, which is nice because some people require it, and you are now good to go. Again, let me just reiterate, this is the quickest and easiest, but the most expensive option. AWS is a little bit more involved. If you can't stomach AWS, this is the best option to run Chroma, aside from locally. Hopefully this documentation remains relevant for longer than the previous video did, and you are good to go. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or compliments, I would love to hear them. And until then, stay tuned for more videos from Memplex Labs.